got started. During the 1980s, our work in the GNU project was to find or write all of the hundreds of components we needed for a complete GNU system. By 1992, we had almost everything, but one major essential component was still missing. That was the kernel, which is the program that allocates the machine's resources to all the other programs. We started working on a kernel in 1990, but that particular project has not been a success. It runs, but it doesn't run very well, so we don't recommend people use it. However, fortunately, we didn't have to wait for that, because in 1992, Mr. Torvalds, who had a non-free kernel called Linux, made it free software, and he released it under the GNU General Public License, which was one of the several free software licenses in use at the time. So once Linux became free software, the combination of Linux and the almost complete GNU system made a complete free operating system, which is basically GNU, but also contains Linux. So a good name for it would be GNU plus Linux, or GNU slash Linux. However, the people who made the combination were focusing so much on this one piece, Linux, that they perceived all the rest of the system as a small add-on. And so they started calling the whole system Linux, which is unfair to us and confusing. And it gives people the wrong idea of who developed this system and why. So please don't do that. Please don't call the system Linux. Please make the tiny effort required to call the system GNU slash Linux. It'll only take you one extra second. <laughs> But it's true that the issue of credit is not the most important ethical issue in life. If it were just a matter of credit, it wouldn't be worth talking about this much. But there's something else much more important at stake in your choice of the name to call the system. Your freedom is at stake. 